Good morning and welcome to the June 6th meeting of the Board of Supervisors. If we could have roll call, please. District 1, Supervisor John Joya. District 2, Supervisor Candace Anderson. Here. District 3, Supervisor Diane Burgess. District 4, Supervisor Karen Mitchoff. Here. District 5, Chair, Supervisor Federal Glover. Here. The next item on our agenda today, we have a presentation. Uh, Kathy Gallagher, if you would come forward, or your representative. And that presentation is the World Elder Abuse Awareness Month in Contra Costa County. Welcome. Good morning, Supervisors. I'm Victoria Tover, Director of Aging and Adult Services, standing in for Kathy Gallagher. And today I'm here to talk about um, Elder Abuse Prevention Month. Um, there is a statewide campaign for recognizing elder abuse. Um, and in Contra Costa County, our message is to know abuse and to report abuse. Um, I was here last month to talk about uh, World um, Elders Day and um, had reported at that time and, and wanted to reiterate that we receive in Contra Costa County over 4,000 reports of elder abuse every year. Uh, and that it's important to note that only one out of every uh, four abuse cases are reported. So less than 25% of the elder abuse that's going on in the county comes to the attention of folks who can act on those cases. Um, we all bear the cost and the burden when victims of abuse do not get the help and services, and it results in an over-reliance on emergency services, longer hospital stays, and strains on community resources. Worse still is the loss of independence and dignity caused by our elders. Financial abuse is the most prevalent and the most underreported form of abuse, with only one in 44 cases being reported and the average loss per victim is $88,000. We often don't think about that amount of money, but when elders are losing homes um, and other properties, um, those losses are significant. We need to promote social connection to prevent abuse. Living alone, cognitive impairment, and social isolation are the lead determining factors for elder abuse. Um, and in Contra Costa County, um, we in EHSD are striving to create a county where in every city um, elders are able to live safely and in dignity and every city is able to offer an age-friendly environment for elders to um, age in place and with dignity and with respect. Um, we are determined to continue to serve elders both in critical services as well as those preventive services to keep folks from moving down into those critical areas. Um, many elders who are reported to our services, what we often don't recognize is that our services are voluntary, that elders have the right to refuse our services, unlike children who we run in to protect and we can scoop them up and put them into a safe environment. With elders, they often do not report abuse because their abuser is a loved one, a caregiver, their child, and they do not want to see the consequences heaped upon their own relatives, or there's a sense of shame um, associated with the fact that this person is providing poor care to them. Um, we are set up to respond to confidential reports from anyone who suspects that an elderly person or an adult with a disability is being abused, neglected, or is self-neglecting. We now average over 340 cases of suspected abuse each month, and in the last year we saw a 30% increase in the number of cases that we are um, seeing in EHSD. Um, we have many partners in our communities who are determined to bring justice to older adults in Contra Costa County, and we have begun the process of forming a forensic center with our community partners. Um, connecting older adults to community support, such as in-home support services and community-based programs, such as Meals on Wheels, transportation, health insurance counseling, and other services keeps them connected and is a top priority of aging and adult services. So I'd like to thank you for recognizing El World Elder Abuse Month and um, 
hope that you will continue to support and join us in several events that are going on in Contra Costa County um, as several cities are also signing proclamations to support elders and hopefully we're beginning to move our entire county towards a more age-friendly environment. Thank you. Well, thank you. Uh, certainly, <laughs> certainly the, the work that you're doing is um, that that is so appreciated because many of us are looking at abuse that takes place each and every day and not really knowing what we're looking at. But I think that you know, if we just take the time to analyze it a little bit more and report it, um, it would be very helpful. So we really appreciate the work that's been done on, on behalf of our elders, and uh, thank you for, for that work. And we're going to come down and present you with the uh, resolution. Um, and I'll ask the board to join me. I will. And I just want to thank you, too. I really appreciate how just in the last few years we've been able to really increase what we're doing for our seniors in our community and heightening that awareness because as Federal mentioned, so often people don't recognize mm -hmm. what they're seeing and as we continue to have the aging population, we're all getting older, every second of the day we want our seniors to be able to have a quality of life where possible, remain in their homes where they're most comfortable in their communities and what we're doing in the county is so helpful and thank you for your leadership with this. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Brightman, Brightman. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, my name is Quanta Parker Brightman. I'm executive director of United Native Americans, a national Indian organization. And I've come here today to advocate for my father, the great Dr. Lehman Brightman. Chief Lehman Brightman of the Lakota Nation. Now, I saw your proclamation just a moment ago, became aware of that. I applaud you for that. But we must take action in regards to the rampant elder abuse that's going on in this county. And specifically, I came here to bring voice for my father in regards to his lazy county worker who's been appointed his conservator by the name of Catherine Riso. This woman over there at the Public Guardian Office, which you guys are over, needs to be fired immediately. My father has been, he has multiple stage four bed sores that have been rampant going on over there at Kindred Walnut Creek. I'd like to remind everyone that we have filed numerous complaints of elder abuse that have been documented and validated by the California Department of Public Health regarding the rampant elder abuse at Kindred Walnut Creek that has gone on far too long. The Department of Justice, through the Elder Justice Initiative, EJI, has won a lawsuit of $125 million against Kindred. Why does the Contra Costa County Public Guardian Office not take action to move you, my sir. father to a quality care facility? Thank you. Catherine Riso needs to be held accountable for not preventing the multiple stage four bed sores that my father is suffering from. He is currently in the ICU because of this elder abuse and fighting for his life. He is on full life support. I just came from the hospital. So if you want to talk about doing something about elder abuse, please take action and fire this lazy county worker immediately, or I will sue this county and make sure that you eat your words. Thank you. Thank you.